Good evening, Zimbabwe. This is Change Radio News. Today is Tuesday, the 6th of August, 2024. The news is read by Josephine Muchabaiwa. Here are the news headlines. Human Rights Defender Namatai Kekweza, R2 Secretary General Robson Chere, Samuel Gwenzi and Vusumuzi Moyo appeared in court today for their bail hearing. EFF's Malema condemns the diabolical rule in Zimbabwe and the silence by SADC and ambassadors. Zimbabwe's water crisis threatens disease outbreaks in Bulawayo Kami prison. And now for the news in detail. Human Rights Defender Namatai Kwekweza, R2 Secretary General Robson Cherry, Samuel Gwenzi and Vusimizu Moyo appeared in court today for their bail hearing. Robson Cherry was badly injured after being tortured by state agents and is still urgently in need of medical attention. The four were abducted at the Robert Mugabe International Airport last week on Wednesday and were incommunicado for eight hours before they were handed over to the police. Our Change Radio reporter gave us this report. A bail hearing for four human rights defenders, Namatei Kwekweza, Samuel Gwenzi, Vusmu Zimoyo, and a true Secretary General Robson Cherry was postponed to Wednesday, August the 7th, 2024, at the Arari Magistrates Court today. The postponement has raised concerns about the well-being of Robson Chariot, the Secretary General of the Amalgamated Rural Teachers Union, who was tortured last week by state agents and has yet to receive medical attention despite a court order. Doctors fear that Chariot's lungs may collapse due to the severity of his injuries, sparking outrage among human rights groups and citizens. The four activists were abducted at the Robert Mugabe International Airport last week and were tortured for eight hours and were later arrested and detained on trumped up charges. Citizens have been urged to show solidarity with the incarcerated activists by attending the court hearing tomorrow at 11.45 a.m. This is Shemiswa Sabanda reporting for Change Radio. Economic Freedom Fighters leader Julius Malema last night spoke out against the diabolical rule in Zimbabwe under Emerson Mnangagwa. He said South Africa and the SADC are failing Zimbabweans due to their mutual egos and self-interest, though it is very evident that General Chiwenga is a spent force and Emerson Mnangagwa has nothing to offer Zimbabweans. He emphasized that his party and like-minded stand in solidarity with Zimbabwe. Malema condemned the government's rampage on the opposition and the silent SADC and ambassadors. This comes at a time almost a hundred political prisoners are in jail on false charges, all of them having been arrested between June and last week, with one of them living with one year old child in prison since June 16 this year. Let's listen to him speak. That nonsense will never come to an end as long as there is no unity of purpose against the tyranny, against the suppression of political wishes of Zimbabweans. So, ourselves at Pan-African Parliament, at the AU, at SADC, we have to have a political will to speak for the people of Zimbabwe. When it comes from us, it will have more weight than when it comes from Europe. Why? Because we are brothers and sisters, they will know it's a friendly fire. But SADC, AU, South Africa, they are failing Zimbabweans because it's a brute cup. It's friendship. It's brother, brother. Brother, brother, leader. Brother, brother. When they meet, brother, 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 brother. <laughs> and then when you ask what is the resolution, no one has taken any resolution. <laughs> so you need a clear position from SADC which gives the timeline that by this time, this should have happened. But otherwise, Mnangangwa is going to come back. And he's got nothing to offer at all. So, Chiwenga is done. He will not be anything. They used him. Chiwenga is no longer the most powerful military man in Zimbabwe now. They have weakened him. So, only the power of the youth of Zimbabwe can change the political status quo. And the Zimbabweans have to know that we are with them. Including Zimbabweans who are here in South Africa. 
The calls for the SADC summit to be moved have grown louder with human rights organization calling on SADC and the African Union to be his brother's keeper and to hold the Zimbabwean government accountable over its senseless human rights abuses on opposition activists. This comes as the DA in South Africa is calling on the International Relations and Corporation Minister Ronald Lamola to exercise South Africa's right as a member of SADC and call for the gathering not to be held in Harare, Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans have been under a punishing 120-hour water rationing schedule for months due to reduced inflows worsened by the El Nino-induced drought. Kami Prison in Blaway is reported to have gone for three weeks without water, bringing in fears of a possible disease outbreak if the problem is not addressed. In an ongoing program to review citizens, MPs and councillors, our reporter Kokelani Zame spoke to residents in Ward 44, Kwazana. The citizens testified that Councillor Donia Shoko is working very hard in the ward. Let's hear the testimony from one of the residents, Mr. Elvis Anusa. I am one of the Ward 44 residents who strongly believe that Councillor Donia Shoko is doing a pretty good job in the ward judging from how he responds to issues that rise to his attention. He's a very good listener who takes advice no matter the person from who uh, the advice will be coming from and is somebody who consults far and wide. Kantana Shoko is also an accountable leader and he believes in meticulously accounting for everything that takes place within the um, physical boundaries of the world. Furthermore, the councillor is passionate about helping improve the lives of the citizens, which sees him promoting various uh, projects to ensure that the people sustain themselves and at least uh, get something on the table. In a bid to stop kids from developing negative identities, the councillor also promotes various sporting activities aimed at taking kids away from the streets. The road from uh, Bulawayo Road into Kwazan Extension was an ISO but it is now in an excellent condition thanks to uh, Councillor Ashoko. He also closely monitors issues of great concern to the world, such as water and sewer, and he ensured that the perennial problem with an electric cable was rectified under his watch, and this was done uh, early this year. So, yeah, we strongly believe that the Councillor is doing a very good job. We just pray that he continues. Our reporter also spoke to Councillor Adonia Shoko. Let's hear from him. A good evening to you, Zimbabwe. A good evening to you, Arari. A good evening to you, uh, Kwazana uh, Ward uh, 44. My name is uh, Councillor Adonia Shoko of uh, Ward 44 in uh, Kwazana constituency. If we talk of Ward 44, we are talking of was an extension part of uh, Paddox, part of uh, Colombra, and, and part of uh, Guadalajara 4. Uh, this constitutes uh, Ward 44. It's quite a big uh, ward though. Of the, uh, I am here present to tell you of uh, our new uh, development that we are happening in our ward and our, uh, our challenges that we are facing in, in, our, in our ward as well. Uh, first, I will start with the uh, developments. We are having a, 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 a marketplace which is under um, construction as we are speaking. We have already finished the toilet and we are also uh, uh, building uh, a primary school which we have already done two blocks uh, to that primary school. Those are the main objectives that we, are, we have done so far. And of our uh, 79, we are helping one of our victims' son, uh, daughter, Nathai, uh, with uh, food and, 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 and school fees. Uh, and she is doing the, uh, the serving. So there's a lot of extra lessons that are done. We are helping him with the uh, school fees of almost uh, every, every day to and from school. And we have been giving them food uh, to feed themselves. So far, these are the little that we have. And there's a lot that we are doing though. But we will uh, welcome you to you for more information. Thank you, Zimbabwe. Thank you, Harare.
Today marks 51 days since Senator James Santimba and the Avondale 77 have been incarcerated. The Crisis in Zimbabwe Coalition has launched a fundraising campaign for the Avondale 79 whose families have been left to fend for themselves after their breadwinners and families attended an innocent bride only to end up incarcerated and in pre-child detention on false charges. The GoFundMe was set up by UK-based human rights activist Delina Muchkambizi. Change Radio implores all citizens to donate to the families of the Avondale 79 through the GoFundMe link provided. Change Radio spoke to former Blaway Senator Dr. Mafa Sibanda, who said that SADC must stand firm and tell ZANU PF to stop human rights abuses. This is what he had to say. Very surprising and confusing that SADC has been captured or is to be captured by ZANU PF during the overstated summit in Zimbabwe. Sadat is in the ZANPF, but the ZANPF is just a host or a venue like what happens in the United Nations General Assembly, whereby the United States of America is a host or a venue of the United Nations. But the United States of America isn't the United Nations General Assembly itself. In the United Nations General Assembly, based in the United States of America, protests, demonstrations, and picketing are allowed to give people freedom of expression. The, but the irony in Zimbabwe is that ZANPF wants to capture Sadak is a ZANPF initiative and doesn't want citizens to protest, demonstrate, or picket. Please, and we beg and please, SADAC should not allow ZANPF to spoil their good reputation and good image by allowing the Iran ZANPF to bulldoze its undemocratic tendencies in the name of SADAC. But a food for thought for Sadak to consider seriously, or else it is going to lose its credibility after Zimbabwe summit. I think climate change and the El Nino induced drought have worsened domestic violence, greatly affecting women and girls. Dried up water sources force women to travel further for water, increasing their vulnerability to violence and exploitation including cases of water for sex at local boreholes. Scarcity of resources like electricity and firewood also leads to household conflicts. This has resulted in a rise in gender-based violence in Zimbabwe, according to the recent domestic violence statistics, with 35% women aged between 15 to 49 reporting physical assault. Change Radio Talk to Women and Girls Let's hear more from them. Kuchinja kama mwezi wa kwanza kuna dalili au nini au nini au climate change kwa tia sekta ya sistema zinai na fursa na kuti tisho la kazi la shinji tunaona ni zipamba tunaona ni shukuta basa ni pamba so kama nusu tunaona ni fursa na kuti mbora yuko kuniita. Ayo magadisa hivi ni mumaruwa uro kumadwa waba watino gara mbura iru kutoniza. Washoma warukua na mbura zuwari garita patepi. Saka mfi ni kumabo kwa tunenda. Zonguwa unu kuna kutumuka na tri yeyo mkuna utuwaga mbura. Shunawa juruku isi wakazi waka wanda ni wasika na panjwazi. Saka drawti ratu kumzirisa wakuti mitishonga mazinga zuwanti. Kutiz, 
Shinafu tishuna shurugue dzera kuti wana sanzu sisani mkugari sana kuzimba Ndani kuzoti kujiporani Nguwe watu wana mwana msikana uja ya ashtu nzi Shuburani shule nguwe kufuru wani nguwe kufuru Watu wana wana msikana ashtu nzi Iyo unu guna nguwe ya ndu kufurira shuburani nguwe ya unoda Unu chira shuburani uti ya mpura yake Neva mwa nuku mwa chunga mezewe muna raunda Ndi wa jikontu wana mjumbo hizo jike mpura Shaka chuno shaka umu Shiri usha tuku sangana na shumungu wa yu ya drought Saka nyangwe kumbao kuhunu kuna utushikiru wa usipo Uto usaka chukutu chaka chaka wati mwuri Nga rama isi uchaka uga na uuni Nga usaka chukutu mimi magiza riku yenda Shuna chaka uma Uto shika upatu tunu kuna utusu ya rasti Wakana kutuwa uruo wa chaiko Mati kwa kundu isi sana kumbae kukuku Munangagwe call for unity within the SADC fails to address critical regional concerns by framing dissent as foreign influence disturbances while ignoring his government's failures. In a statement yesterday of the National Heroes Acre, he cited Zimbabwean's achievements which dismisses valid critiques on governance and human rights, risking alienation of critics and potential allies. His rigid stance indicates a refusal to engage in necessary reforms which could undermine Zimbabwe's position and SADC's effectiveness. Additionally, his governance raises concerns about safety and reflects paranoia in regarding constitution and human rights laws. The beautification initiative in Harare ahead of the SADC summit raises significant concerns despite its goal to improve the city's image. It prioritizes aesthetics over critical issues like corruption, inadequate infrastructure, poverty and poor service delivery. The deployment of extra police and curfews on public gatherings in high-density areas may infringe on citizens' rights, creating fear rather than security. This focus on a polished facade for a diplomatic event along with strict security measures shows a troubling neglect of the local population's genuine needs. Analysts suggest that Mnangago Susha is increasingly bleak as residents view his rule as tyrannical, likening it to the oppressive Smith regime, though in this case it reflects the exploitation of a black man by a black man. Detained foreign tourists Lucas Slavic from the Czech Republic and Tom Sekama from Uganda have gone on a hunger strike at Mashingo Remand Prison, demanding to see their country's representatives. They were arrested last week, Slavic for allegedly recording a video about water shortages and power cuts in Zimbabwe, and Sekamwe for possessing a sex toy. In court, their lawyer Knowledge Mavure argued that the law Slavic was charged under has been repealed, noting the irony of power cuts happening during the proceedings. Despite this, the magistrate denied their bail request, remanding them in custody while police impounded their laptops, cameras and personal belongings. In international news, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, fled to India in an army helicopter on Sunday after thousands of protesters took to the streets. Hundreds of citizens died in the protest that erupted against the 30% quota given in government jobs to the families of the 1971 war veterans. Sheikh Hasina's resignation marks the end of the 15-year authoritarian rule in Bangladesh. The wave of violent unrest in parts of the UK continued yesterday, the 5th of August, with incidents reported in Belfast, Darlington and Plymouth. In Plymouth, police arrested six individuals and several police officers sustained minor injuries. In South Belfast, riot police faced attacks involving stones and petrol bombs near a recently burned supermarket. These unrests follow a mass stabbing in Southport that resulted in three fatalities, BB King, Elsie Dot Stacom, and Alice the Silver Aguar. A vigil was held for the victims, attracting hundreds of attendees who honored their memory with flowers and balloons. One child involved in the stabbing remains hospitalized, while the suspect 17-year-old Axel Muganwaru Dagbaka 
faces multiple charges including murder and attempted murder. Since the rioting began, nearly 400 arrests have been made. In sports news, Zimbabwean athletes Makanaka Ishe Charamba and Tapiwa Makarau qualified for the semi-finals in the men's 200-meter sprint at the Paris 2024 Olympics after finishing second in their separate heats. Charamba finished his race with 20 seconds, 27 milliseconds, whereas Makarau completed the race with a time of 20 seconds and 7 milliseconds. Still in Olympics Paris 2024, France under 27 men's football side advanced to the finals after beating Egypt by 3-1. Spain came up from behind to eliminate Morocco by 2-1. The French will lock horns against the Spanish in the gold medal battle. Dynamo's coach Genesis Kakamangombe has been shown the exit door and will be replaced by his assistant Lloyd Mablanyo Chigoe on an interim basis. The Dynamo's executive met on Monday night and decided to part ways with Mangombe, who has presided over six wins, 12 draws and four defeats in 22 matches this season. Chugoi will take charge of weekend's match against log leader Simba Bora as Dynamos are working on bringing in a foreign coach ahead of the CAF Confederation Cup preliminary round first leg against Zambian side Zesco United next weekend. To end the news, here are the headlines once again. Human Rights Defender Namatai Kweza, Archie Secretary General Robson Cheris, Samuel Gwenzi and Vusimu Zimoyo appeared in court today for their bail hearing. EFS Malema condemned the diabolical rule in Zimbabwe and the silence by the SADC and ambassadors. Zimbabwe's water crisis threatens disease outbreak in Blawaya's Kami prison. That concludes this news bulletin. Thank you for listening. For myself, Josephine Mushabaiwa, and the entire team at Change Radio, have a good night.